Okay, next. Next, I'd like to continue with our <coughs> example problem and insert our data. Recall that we had hours of instruction and units produced in the regression analysis one video. So we'll go ahead and put in our data and the units produced five, four, six, eight, seven. And on the previous video, we calculated the regression equation by hand, but now we're going to um, do it with Excel. First thing you need to make sure is that you've got your uh, analysis tool pack added in. If you don't have it, you need to go to add-ins and click on that so that it brings it in. Um, so let's click on data analysis <coughs> and we'll go down to regression analysis and say OK. And this window pops here and it's saying input the Y range. Well, the Y range is your dependent variable, so we'll just highlight that. And then we'll say input your X range, which is your independent variable, hours of instruction. And let's see, do we want the labels, I suppose? No, let's, uh, let's have a new worksheet. Let's get some residuals residual plots, line fit plots. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we just say OK. And here's the new sheet. Here's our line fit plot. And we saw this before. And there's our residual plot that we saw on the first video. Okay. And again, the important thing is to make sure it looks linear, which it's, it does approximately. And look at your residual plots to make sure that your errors are independent from each other, so there's no patterns here. And make sure that you've got variance uh, approximately normally distributed. Okay, the things that you want to look at here, first of all, the regression equation itself, there's the intercept 3.6, and there's the slope 0.8. So y hat is equal to 3.6 plus 0.8 times x. Okay? Second thing you probably want to look at is your r-squared value. r-squared is right there. 0.64. That's the coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination is always between 0 and 1. And it's defined as, that's the percentage of variation in y that's explained by x. So in this case, 64% of the variation in y is, which is the... Uh, the units produced can be explained by hours of instruction. If you take the square root of the R squared, you get the correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficients are between negative 1 and positive 1, so if you've got a negative uh, slope, then it's a negative correlation, you would attach a negative sign to it. Next thing you're probably going to want to look at is the, uh, the T or the P. Okay. Um, because you want to do a hypothesis test to see if this is statistically significant. Well, we've got the p-value right there. So, on the previous video, we said you reject an null hypothesis and conclude that there is a statistically significant relationship if the p is less than your alpha level. See that p is 0 0.104. It's higher than 10%, higher than 5%, higher than 1%. So, here we have to claim that no, uh, this is not statistically significant. There's a over a 10% probability, 10% chance of uh, finding this result given that there's no relationship between these variables. So that's the probability of it happening by chance, which is pretty high. So it's not statistically significant. Okay, um, let's go back to our sheet and try this. I think the reason it wasn't statistically significant was because our sample size was so small. It was only a sample of size 5. So let's, uh, let's try it again, except now let's use a sample of size 10. Okay, we'll use the same exact data. We'll just copy it in there. And let's run it again. So we'll go to Tools, Data Analysis, again, Regression, OK.
we need to re redefine our dependent variable to include all 10 data points. Our independent variable the same. And let's see, we want the residuals again, new worksheet, say OK. There is the new one. OK, notice that the residual plot and the line plot look exactly the same as expected because it's the same exact data just in there twice. Um, notice that the, uh, the intercept and the slope are exactly the same as we'd expect. Uh, the R squared is exactly the same. 64% of the variation in Y is explained by X. What's different now is the p-value. Look at the p-value here and that higher T statistic. P-value is 0 0.005. It's a, uh, about a half of 1%. So now we can conclude that this model with a sample size 10 is statistically significant because the probability of seeing this by chance, given there's no relationship between these variables, is only uh, a half of 1%. So this p-value, 0 0.005, is less than 0 0.01, it's less than 0 0.05, it's less than 0 0.10, all the common levels of significance that you might use, the alpha levels. So therefore we can conclude that yes, there is a relationship now, a statistically significant relationship, between hours of instruction and units produced. And you could go ahead and use the model however you like. Okay, let's change this model into a multiple regression model. And on the earlier video I said what we do is include another independent variable. Let's just say that we've got the age of the people. And I'll just randomly put in some ages. Okay, so now we've got two independent variables and still one dependent variable. And let's see what happens. We'll go to data analysis again, regression, say OK. Um, the dependent variable is the same, but now the, we're going to have two independent variables. So we select the range. So when you're doing this at home, uh, you might want to put your independent variables together on the worksheet so you can just swipe the range. And let's say OK. So there's a residual plots, line plots again. You're going to want to take a look at those. But um, there's, your, there's your intercept and then the two slopes, for one for age and the other for uh, uh, hours of instruction. Notice that the R squared went up a little bit to 0.66. Now whenever you throw in a new variable, the R squared is always going to go up. So what you want to do is look at the adjusted R-squared when you're talking about multiple regression and compare that to the previous model. Notice the adjusted R-squared went down from point, it was originally 0.64, now it's at 0.569. It's gone down, so uh, uh, it, that's the first indicator that this isn't a very good model. The next indicator, well, first look at the overall F. The F test is now uh, important here with multiple regression. And that's the p-value for the f-test because that tests whether beta 1 is equal to beta 2 is equal to 0. So all of your uh, betas are equal to 0 versus the, the alternative hypothesis at least one is different. So that's significant at the 5% level and the 10% level, but not at the 1. So something's significant here. And if you go down and look at the p-values, you can see that the p-value on age is 0.489. So there's a 48 0.9% chance of this happening by chance given that there's no relationship so clearly age is not a very good variable but uh, still hours of instruction is still a good variable it's significant at the 1% level uh, so we would reject the null hypothesis on hours of instruction we would not reject the null hypothesis on age so what you'd want to do in this case is dump age and go back to your original model so your objective is to, to use as few variables as possible, but just keep the good ones in there.